Hey, it's the Nerdy Sports Fan. So, this is the second in my series surrounding the Colin Kaepernick protests. Now, many people remember that Colin Kaepernick himself was not the only gentleman who protested during the um, 2016 season and on. There were a lot of people involved in it. The first people involved with it, as long as he was, um, kneeling specifically, uh, Eric Reed, teammate of his, safety, all pro safety from the previous year, or Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl. And um, on the Denver Broncos, Brandon Marshall, linebacker. Now, obviously, Eric Reed was a teammate of Kaepernick's on the same NFL team. Brandon Marshall was a teammate of Kaepernick's as well. They were buddies from the um, University of Nevada, I want to say. They attended college together. And when Brandon found out what Kaepernick was doing in protest, he joined in solidarity. Now, at the time, there was a lot of conversation in the media, um, a lot of co-opting of the conversation. The protest always was, from the very beginning, against police brutality, specifically against black men, because during a couple of years, there was a lot of police violence towards unarmed black men, killing them in the streets. Look it up online. There's plenty of video on YouTube and other sources showing all of it. Now, the protest was really just those few guys at first. And on September 11th, there were a lot of players on the Miami Dolphins that joined in in the protest, including uh, John Jenkins, uh, Kenny Stills, um, and a handful of other players, uh, Michael Thomas, and I want to say Arian Foster all knelt during the anthem as well. Um, a few weeks into the season go by, and now during this lead-up, all of this lead-up, Donald Trump has made the kneeling during the anthem a huge campaign topic. And honestly, it gained him a lot of momentum in the polls because of it. The media never really stopped talking about the conversation from the political pundits about it being disrespectful to the flag. They never once really had any amount of coverage of what the protest was about, police brutality. They just kept hammering home the, is it disrespectful to kneel during the anthem? Is it not? Is it a First Amendment thing? Does he have the right to blah, 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 blah. An entirely co-opted conversation. They removed the talking points of everything surrounding what they were protesting for and shifted the conversation to something where it was, you know, you're capable of taking the moral high ground if you're on either side of the conversation. Whole bunch of crap. Either way, a few weeks into the season, Donald Trump is elected into office. And the week after, Mike Evans of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sat through the anthem. Now, this was a tactic that Kaepernick originated with and shifted away from because he wanted to kneel as a sign of respect to the fallen troops. Um, Mike Evans, after sitting through the anthem, um, openly stated that it was based off of Trump being elected. He said that Trump's candidacy was a joke and that him being elected is just continuing that bad joke. Now, he got a lot of backlash because him sitting through the anthem also happened only a few days after Veterans Day. He then openly apologized, which I think is kind of crap. Either way, uh, these protesters in the league were losing a lot of endorsement deals. 
mostly the smaller endorsements, mostly the local endorsements, the, the car dealerships and things of that nature, the, the local area salespeople that hammer home Memorial Day sales events and Fourth of July sort of stuff that, that rely on patriotism for a lot of their marketing. So those sorts of people cut their financial ties with all of the protesting players. Now, in the 2017 season, this protest continued. And a gentleman by the name of Seth DeVale became the first white player in the NFL to kneel in protest along with Kaepernick. Props to Seth. In this current culture, we hear a lot about allies. So Mr. DeVale was the first NFL player ally to put his neck out. Again, props to you, Seth. So Trump was making all sorts of statements around now. Um, I want to say a direct quote was, a, get that son of a bitch off the field. He's talking about the owners policing this by creating policy after policy that anybody who you know, kneels or sits during the anthem is going to be fined, uh, really exorbitant fines, that, that sort of thing. So immediately after these statements, 200 NFL players and coaches that very week joined the protest. 200 people. This went from a very small protest, we're talking maybe a dozen people at the most, to Trump making it a point where the owners need to force their views on the players, and the players and coaches responding by multiplying the number of people protesting by more than 20. So, big, big, big boost in the number of protesters. Now, right around this time, you started to get a lot of people trying to turn the moment into something where they could show solidarity with their team. So, this has transitioned from kneeling in protest of police brutality to kneeling or sitting in protest of Trump to now teams trying to make more grandiose statements about solidarity within the league and within their team. You saw like the Packers were all arm in arm along the sideline. You saw the Oh, I want to say it was the Texans. I, I could be wrong here, but uh, there were teams doing things like kneeling on the sideline pre-anthem and then during the anthem, standing with interlocked arms. There were all sorts of different varieties, team-wide things. There were also teams that didn't do a unified thing um, that had multiple players that would raise a fist in solidarity with their teammates. The uh, specific players doing this were, let's see. Oh, man. Marcus Peters, Devin McCourty, and Martellus Bennett all raised the fist in protest. I, I mean, so this changed. It evolved. And it kept on shifting further and further and further away from what Kaepernick's original message was. So the conversation shifted further and further and further away from why he was protesting in the first place. And it kept on bouncing around to a conversation about whether or not it was disrespectful to kneel to, oh, that's against Trump. So it's very obviously a liberal thing. It, it, it got co-opted so badly by actually both sides of pol the political spectrum that eventually the conversation on ESPN uh, began rating who was doing it the right way, who was putting the message out there the right way. And of course, everybody sided with what the Cowboys did, um, you know, coming out onto the field, interlocked arms, 
you know, kneeling and then standing, a bunch of crap that Jerry Jones, um, who has been the most outspoken anti-Kaepernick owner, uh, put together for his team, and the media kind of jumped all over things like that. So, to date, oh, I um, also want to point out that in October of 2017 is when Kaepernick filed his grievance. So, after the uh, 2016 season ended, Kaepernick was cut, and he didn't have a team to go to, all right? He's a free agent. So you have a quarterback that has brought his team to the Super Bowl and the NFC Championship game. Obviously, well-proven commodity. Could not get a contract. Now, you can read into some things that one John Elway has said that lean towards this was definitely collusion by the NFL. But collusion is very difficult to prove. Very difficult. You have to essentially prove that every single one of these owners spoke to one another in some way and said, yeah, we're not going to sign that guy, right? And getting any information leads to speculation, sure. So having the information and the conversation with John Elway, which was a press conference, by the way, um, having that out there really helped Kaepernick's cause. But the idea that he was a slam dunk to prove collusion was far from reality. Um, so that grievance eventually did settle. To date, there were three players throughout the 2019 season still kneeling in protest. They were uh, former Dolphins um, who protested together, Albert Wilson and Kenny Stills, and Eric Reed, who was playing for the Carolina Panthers during that season. Now, the uh, 2019 season also saw a settlement by the NFL in the grievance filed by Eric Reed and Colin Kaepernick against the league with collusion being the charge. Um, they settled after Eric Reed had already gotten himself a job. A lot of people pointed to that as proof that there was no collusion. Um, bunch of crap. Bunch of crap. I, I mean, the idea that Eric Reed went unsigned is insane to me. Eric Reed being a Pro Bowl heavy hitting, absolute dynamite safety at the peak of his career. Went over a year before he found a team. And the Panthers immediately embraced that man as a leader of the defense. And he was one of the leaders on the field immediately as well. More than a year away from the game, no problem. Stepped right into his role as a leader on and off the field. And his teammates freaking loved him. So, to date, the only person that really suffered a long period of any sort of recourse to these protests was Colin Kaepernick. Eric Reed got a job again well before him. Kaepernick's still not employed by the NFL. Um, the first players to join the protest that weren't part of the original grouping, the Miami Dolphins players, um, none of them suffered any sort of bouts of unemployment from the league during that entire time afterwards. Some of these guys have lost a lot of local sponsorships and national sponsorships, yes. On the sponsorship point, though, Colin Kaepernick really cashed in on this. Colin Kaepernick became the frontman for Nike's new campaign during his act of protest and his unemployment from the NFL. Um, made him a very wealthy sponsor of the very prominent Just Do It campaign. Now, um, that was the silver lining for Kaepernick. He is still now essentially just a 
protester, a, a political activist, that's the man's job right now. Now he has put on workouts just last year. Prior to the 2019 season, Kaepernick was invited by the NFL to work out for the all the owners at the same time. All the owners, front office people, coaches, everything. Now they invited him to this workout with little to no preparation. They gave him two weeks time. That is nothing in the schedule of a professional athlete. Think of boxers or other prize fighters. These guys get a full year of training for something very specific. So the least they could have given the guy was a month or two. The offseason is a very long period of time. And during that, you can only give him two weeks buildup. Okay. During that two-week buildup, it became apparent that this was being done largely to counteract the grievance. They wanted this to be a talking point to help them win the arbitrated grievance against the NFL on Kaepernick's part. That information coming out led Kaepernick to not attend the exact workout that the league organized for him. Instead, he just the very same day held a workout across town with his people instead of people provided by the league conducting the workout, acting as receivers, and other people involved in a quarterback's professional workout. Instead of every team in the league having some sort of representation at that workout, there were only two that actually went out with anyone across town to attend the workout that Kaepernick organized for himself. So there were attempts on Kaepernick's part to get himself back in the league. He made all sorts of concessions. He actually has stated multiple times that he will not continue protesting if he were to sign with an NFL team. Specific clauses he offered in his contract that around not kneeling, not sitting, what, whatever, during the anthem so he could again be an NFL quarterback. Always denied, never given a chance to really join a team. So now, here in 2020, we're revisiting this because the exact reason that Kaepernick was kneeling to begin with has reared its ugly head again after footage of George Floyd being murdered by a police officer in Minneapolis. When this man stared off into space for nine minutes while his knee was pressed to George Floyd's neck and George Floyd pled for his life. I believe this round of activism is going to be far, far, far more effective than the round of activism started by Kaepernick in 2016 that continued through 2019 in the NFL. Mostly because all of it ended up happening while all of us were at home. The combination of everyone being at home due to the plague sweeping the nation and everyone desperately searching for entertainment because sports were now canceled was forced into seeing the George Floyd incident for themselves well before any media outlet 
could have spun it any way at all. Forcing a huge amount of people to form their own opinion and be all sorts of upset about it. Well before any media outlet had the time or the chance to tell them how to think. I'm thankful for this moment because it does feel like real change is just over the horizon. I can't wait to see what that world is. Hit me up in the comments, like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Thank you for watching.